Welcome to this very special episode of Above the Clouds, which we will de dedicate to Srila Bhakti Sananda Saraswati Thakur's um, disappearance day. Because we had celebrated it last uh, week. There was one particular poem which Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master, wrote to uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, in which um, he expressed something which uh, uh, his spiritual master noted and for which he called him a Kaviraj, a true poet. This is the uh, stanza. Absolute is sentient. Thou hast proved impersonal calamity. Thou hast moved. This gives us a life, a new and fresh. Worship thy feet, your divine grace. When Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati uh, Thakur Prabhupada was listening to this, he had actually uh, become very, very, very enthusiastic. In uh, this episode, we want to highlight two features of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. One is his dedicating to dedication to chanting, and the second, his amazing uh, uh, pointed preaching. In 1905, Srila Siddhanta Saraswati undertook a vow to chant at least three lakhs of holy names daily or 10 million monthly until he had completed a number of one billion holy names. Now, one lakh of holy names uh, takes a normal chanter um, eight hours. Three legs, which he practiced in the Saraswati Thakur chanted daily, takes uh, us 16 <laughs> uh, hours. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur chanted at least these 16 hours uh, a, a day. Day and night he chanted. Because he also studied the scriptures, he found time to write. And as we will see later, he took time to preach. He was so busy that if rain came and leaked through the leaves that covered his little bamboo cottage, he would not get up to repair the uh, hole in the roof. No, he would just hold up an umbrella and continue chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Some of his amazing insights or, um, how do you say, deepest realization, he shared with uh, uh, one of his disciples. He said, mm, there is no point in making se a separate effort to artificially remember the Lord's form, qualities and pastimes. No, the Lord and his name are one and the same. This will be understood clearly when the coverings in your heart are removed by uh, chanting without offenses you will personally realize that all perfections come from the holy name and then he said you will realize your personal form and once you have done so see krishna in his form you will realize your own qualities and your activities and upon doing this you will see Krishna's qualities and his divine pastimes. All this will simply come 
from the chanting of the holy name. But he made a point. He said, the true nature of Harinam is revealed by listening to, reading and studying the scriptures. Mm, this is a very important point. You can understand Krishna uh, as holy name and chant with a sense of deepest connection and devotion only when you have understood about him through the uh, scriptures. Then he adds his letter. It is unnecessary to write anything further on this subject. All these things will be revealed to you through chanting. So, mm, mm, as I said, to complete his vow, uh, he took more than nine years. And uh, uh, although he was uh, mainly active in chanting, he would also go to some important preaching programs. And there, another quality comes out. He would speak in such a way that sometimes those who were, were attack, attached to falsehoods became upset because he was undefeatable. For instance, the caste brahmanas who think only by birth as a brahmana is one entitled to move on the path of bhakti and uh, so on. He proved in an assembly that Vaishnavas are directly under the control of Krishna, not under the control of Brahmanas, uh, and therefore they are even higher in their status than, than, than Brahmanas. Yes, uh, so the, this brought him enemies. Mm, uh, for instance, during one Navadvi Parikrama, the caste Brahmanas, in order to retaliate, had uh, hired uh, the police inspector, uh, the chief of police, actually, and some thugs. And uh, the chief was uh, advised to look in the other way. And these thugs or gundas were throwing uh, stones on the Vaishnavas who were walking with Kirtan through the streets of Navadvipa. They created a bloodshed, but they were after only one Vaishnava, uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. One disciple who had white dress saw it and he quickly changed the saffron dress of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, took on the saffron dress himself and escaped by horse. In this way, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur could uh, move away unharmed. But it was terrible. These were dark moments for the Gaudiya movement. Um, and uh, uh, by Krishna's news, by Krishna's mercy, the news of the event spread and uh, the tremendous atrocity of the caste brahmanas were revealed. So afterwards, uh, the Gaudiyas stood there in a good, good light. Uh, but uh, this could have been avoided, you could have said, you could say, if Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur would not have been so outspoken. <laughs> But uh, there was a reason, and it is very important to understand because this will help us understand from where Srila Prabhupada took this tremendous courage and also outspokenness to criticize uh, the atheistic scientists, the false philosophers, the pseudo-religionists, and so on and so forth. Srila Saraswati Thakur was of the opinion that it was imperative not only to elucidate the truth but also to criticize anything false because he said in Kali Yuga there's so much false propaganda 
that we have to be very clear, not ambiguous in our message. He therefore said the positive method by itself is not the most effective method of preaching in a controversial age like the present. No, the negative method, which seeks to differentiate the truth from non-truth in all its forms, is even better calculated to convey the directly inconceivable significance, significance of the absolute. It is a necessity which cannot be consciously avoided by the dedicated preacher of the truth if he wants to be a loyal servant of Godhead. And he said, people nowadays are so ensnared and covered and bewildered and misguided by Maya that if you don't show them this path is dangerous and it is false, then they will not be able to let go of Maya. Towards the end of life, in fact, only a few days before his departure, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati um, uh, uh, spoke his last. In those days, a very renowned physician had advised him, you have to rest more, you can't speak so much. But Saraswati Thakur uh, proceeded to preach for hours about the purpose of human life because he thought, felt that if he couldn't speak about Krishna, what would be the use of living? So at the end, he gathered his disciples around his bedside and he said, I have upset many persons' minds. Many might have considered me their enemy because I was obliged to speak the plain truth of service and devotion towards the Absolute Godhead. I have given them all those troubles only so that they might turn their face towards the personality of Godhead without any desire for gain and with unalloyed devotion. Surely someday they will be able to understand that. And then at the last night, it was just briefly after midnight, he turned to his disciples um, who were there and asked them to sing one song of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The song expresses, Oh, I have not developed attraction to the holy name. And with this uh, yearning in deep, humility, this high expression of longing for Krishna's complete mercy, that great Acharya breathed his last and went back to the spiritual world. When Prabhupada was asked to speak about Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, he would say, what can I say? He was a Vaikuntha man, that is a person from the spiritual uh, realm. Let us follow the footsteps of this great Acharya. Let us uh, uh, be um, full of uh, willingness to hear uh, the, his example and uh, then I'm sure our path will be so much easier. I wish you all the best and welcome to the next Above the Clouds.